Okay, on example 12 here it says, at a particular two-year college, 70% of the students are enrolled in a developmental math course, 60% of the students are freshmen, and 80% of the students enrolled in a developmental math course are freshmen. And it asks what percent of students at this particular two-year college are freshmen that are enrolled in a developmental math course. Well, we've got two variables going on here, freshmen and also whether they're in statistics or not. So let's label what we know. First, we were given that 70% are in the developmental math course. So we'll see, say D for developmental. So the probability of developmental is 70%. We were also told that 60% of the students are freshmen. So we'll say F for freshmen. And we'll label that F. So the probability of freshmen is 60%. Now this uh, bit here that 80% of the students in, uh, enrolled in a developmental math course. Uh, our freshmen. So this is out of those students in developmental math. So it's the probability of freshmen given they were developmental math students. So it's out of these developmental math students. So this is the way you write this. This is uh, that conditional probability. This is the probability of freshmen given on the condition that that they are developmental. So out of those developmental, the probability that you randomly select somebody that's a freshman, out of those developmental is 80%. So you have to label that correctly. That's not the and. What we're looking for is the and thing. What uh, percent of students out of the whole population are freshmen that are enrolled in developmental? Well, freshmen that are enrolled in developmental mean they have to be both. They have to be freshmen and developmental. We would write that this way with this intersection sign. So these two events are not necessarily independent of each other. In fact, almost all students that take statistics are sophomores. So there's not a even split there. And don't assume things to be independent unless you're dealing with little tiny things like dice and cards and coins type of thing. So anything else, you're going to need to use this formula right here that the probability of, I'll just say it with A's and B's, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. See, these two here are the opposite letters and the letter that goes down here is the same as this one right here. You can remember it that way. Now, I'd work it out that way if we were given the probability of D given F, but we're not. We're given the probability of F given D, and they are two different things. Well, you can just rearrange the letters, flip-flop the letters, and it's an equivalent formula. For example, we can calculate this same thing by doing the probability of D times the probability of F given D. And we have the probability of F given D. That was 80%, and the probability of D was 70% and 70% times 80% is 56%. What I'll do is I'll pause this a second and I'll put a little table together to show you what this looks like. So here's the table and uh, what I did was here's all the developmental, 70% are developmental. Well then therefore there's only two choices, you either are in developmental math or you're not. So 70% are in developmental, that means the remaining 30% have to be not in developmental math. And by the same idea, if 60% are freshmen, then 40% are not freshmen or sophomores. It's a two-year college, so the remaining 40% have to be sophomores. These have to add up to 100%, and these have to add up to 100%. Also, every uh, row going across has to add up to that total percentage. Like, for example, we just calculated the probability of F and D. That's this area right here. Freshmen and developmental, that's 56%. This one we would label uh, probability of freshman and not D, not developmental. And to get this, look, the total is 60%. So to get this spot here, we would just take 60% minus 56% and get this spot. Once we know one of these spots, if we know the totals here, we can subtract to get the remaining. Like once this is 4%, we could subtract to get the 26% here because 30% minus 4% is 26%. Same way here, we could get this by taking 26% off of the 40% or the 56% off of the 70%. All these spots here are the intersections, the ands, like freshman and developmental, sophomore and developmental. Here is uh, freshman and non-developmental, and here is sophomore and non-developmental. So that helps out a lot to do that in case the problem gets harder, which they will on these examples. So here's part B. It says, uh, what percentage of freshmen are enrolled in a developmental math course? The main thing is reading this, it, this is not the and. It's not probability of developmental and freshmen. To be that, it would have to say something like, what percentage of the students are freshmen developmental math students? It doesn't say that. This says, what percentage of 
Freshman. So this is what the bottom thing is. Freshman. It's out of the freshman. And how many of those are in developmental math? That's what we want to know. So it's the probability of D given F. Now, I don't know what that is. So what I do is I write a formula that has the probability of D given F in it. Now, the, um, uh, the AND formulas, the ones with this, will always have this type of thing in it. So all you do is write the formula with, the, with those two letters that has the AND in it. So that's the one we were dealing with up above here, except the original way that we uh, wrote it where we didn't have that information. So for example, the probability of F and D is equal to something times the thing we're looking for, the probability of D given F. Well, if this is a D right here, this has to be a F. Remember me saying that these have to be opposite letters. So if there's a D here, there has to be F here. Just like if there's an F here, there has to be a D here. So again, I wrote this formula because it's asking for this. And this is the only formula that has this, this particular thing in it. So now what we do is fill in what we know. Well, we were given that the uh, percentage of uh, freshmen is 60%. And we also know from the previous problem right here that there was 56% in this little square right there. So uh, filling in what we know here then, we have that this right here is 56%. The probability of uh, freshmen is 60%, and here's what we're missing. Well, this little equation here is similar to an equation like 8 equals 2x. This is the x right here. This is your unknown. So if you have 2x here, what do you do? You divide by the 2. Well, it's the same thing here. You've got to divide both sides by the 0. 0.6. So I get uh, the, just do this on a calculator, and you get 0. 0.93 repeating or 93.3 repeating percent. Okay, on part C, it says what percentage of freshmen are not enrolled in developmental math? Okay, write what you're looking for. In this problem, we said it has percentage of freshmen, so it's out of freshmen, and it says not enrolled in developmental math. So that's D with that little hash thing over it, which means not D, not in developmental math. What do you do? Well, write a formula that has this in it. So the AND formula does. So write probability of F and D, not D, sorry is equal to, now w over here on the right, we put what we're looking for, which is the probability of not D given F, and here we put the other thing. Now look, if there's a not D here, right here has to be the other letter that we're dealing with, which is the probability of F. Now, <clears throat> let's put in what we know on this formula. This is what we're looking for. We already know the probability of freshmen was 60%, but this little thing right here, the probability of F and not D, well, that's an intersection, and we know all the intersections. Okay, this intersection right here, we know it's got to be 4%. That's freshman and not developmental because this is 56% and the total of that row was 60%. So just subtracting, we get this to be 4%. So this bit is 4%. So substituting that into this equation right here, we get that 4% or 0.04 equals 60% or 0.6 times what we're looking for. Solve that just like we did before. Divide and you get 0.06 repeating. Okay. Now, little things you could do is if if uh, in the uh, here we're trying to find this is just if you're uh, quick enough to see this this type of thing is hard for most people to understand down here. The table is the best way, but a little thing here is we're trying to find the probability of not being in in developmental given that the student is a freshman. Well, we just calculated a little bit ago the probability of uh, of uh, let's see what is it the probability of right here, the probability of developmental given freshmen. Okay, developmental given freshmen was 93%. So if you're a freshman, there's only two possibilities. You're either in developmental math or you're not. So if we already know the probability that you're not in developmental math, it, given that your freshman is 93%, then the probability that you, uh, if we already know that you are in developmental math, given your freshman is 93%, then the probability that you're not, given your freshman is 1 minus that or 6%. If you don't get this bit right here, don't worry about it. You can always work it out just by using the table with a formula. Let's try a new one here. It says, what percentage of students are sophomore developmental math students? Notice, it's not uh, of sophomores or of developmental math. It means, it says, of students. So it's out of your entire population. They have to be sophomore developmental. The assumed word here is and. So they need to be sophomore and developmental. That's this this little square right here, sophomore and developmental. So to get that, we already know this is 70%. We know this is 56%, so just subtract, and you'll get the 14%. The ands are easy. It's the given stuff that's tough. 
Okay, on this one, 